Okay, we'll go ahead and get started talking about the, uh, the upcoming event with flooding and severe weather over the next few days. This is our potential rainfall graphic. This will be from late tonight through the day on Monday. And um, looking at the heaviest rainfall, and again, remember fuzzy edges on the lines here, but the heaviest rainfall uh, generally south of a line from Stillwater to Lawton in that area. Uh, area rainfall amounts of four to seven inches, but possible through uh, Monday and uh, isolated heavier amounts in there. Uh, there you know, there's going to be the potential for things like we saw the last week or so where we had some exceptionally heavy rainfall over a really small area. So that's impossible to forecast in advance, but we do expect that there to be pockets of maybe some even heavier rainfall through Monday. The lighter green shaded area is two to four inches and then far northwest Oklahoma will get off easiest uh, when it comes to rainfall with this with only uh, one to two inches uh, between now and Monday. We're going to keep going through the slides. If you have questions as we go along, you can type those in the question box and we'll try to address those as we go along, but we will pause for questions at the end. This is a map directly from our web page, uh, the Advanced Hydrologic Prediction System, and this is something you can access, but these each of these dots is a, a forecast point for uh, a river in our area. And you can see the color code up in the top right hand corner of the screen. If you see purple, that's a river uh, forecast point that's, has, that's in major flooding right now. This is the current uh, status of uh, forecast points across the area. See lots of uh, several red uh, dots there that are in moderate flood and lots of orange. The next slide is going to show us what that's the, what we think the maximum forecast flood category might be between now and the next several days. And we see that there's more reds and more purples on there. We're going to talk specifically about some of those reds and purples here um, right now. So Steve Krukenberg is our service hydrologist, and he's our uh, by far the expert in the office on all this. And he's he's been working long hours on all of this. So he's going to brief us on some of the specific sites on, on flooding and what we can expect. All right. What we have here is some of the river data for um, the sites in that are in flood are expected to go into flood. Um, one thing about the forecasts that you see on here, they're based on uh, morning forecasts, and we will be getting um, new forecasts within about an hour or so. <clears throat> as far as the Red River, Berkman Nets, uh, just a little bit over flood, flood stage is nine feet, and um, it's expected to crest uh, about 10.1 feet this um, Friday evening. For uh, Terrell downstream, flood stage is 22 feet there, um, so it's just a, about a little over a foot uh, above flood stage now. It's past crest and expected to continue a slow fall and fall below flood stage on Sunday. For Gainesville, 31.44 um, feet, uh, almost six and a half feet above flood stage, uh, a crest of 35.8 feet expected Friday morning. Um, Beaver Creek, it's past crest. It crested just a little bit above 30 feet earlier today and expected to fall below flood stage on Friday. Uh, Wichita Falls were just a little, about 0.8 feet below uh, flood stage of 18 right now with a crest of 23.2 feet expected Friday evening. Uh, Hedrick, it's about three feet over flood stage right now, uh, near crest, uh, fall below flood stage on Friday. Uh, Walters uh, is still coming up. It's uh, about almost five feet above flood stage with a crest of 26.4 feet uh, uh, this evening. Um, Deep Red Creek near Randallette, um, 24.27 feet. It's already crested and expected to fall below uh, flood stage on Friday. For the Washita River, um, Carnegie is uh, near crest now and should begin falling uh, later this evening. Uh, Anadarko, uh, crest of 21.6 feet tomorrow, Friday evening. Chickasha is expected to uh, remain below a uh, flood stage of uh, 19 feet, so a crest of around 16.9 feet on Saturday. Uh, Lindsay crested. At 18.1 feet overnight, uh, just above flood stage, so and it's past crest and expected to fall. Um, 
And for the site on the Washita near Dixon, a crest of 30.6 feet Thursday evening, although it seemed to be cutting under the forecast somewhat, and um, adjustments will be made on the afternoon forecast. Uh, down uh, in the southeast part of our area in Toka and Bryan counties, uh, Clear Boggy Creek near Caney was at about 24.7 feet. It had already crested and it's going to fall below flood stage on Sunday. Ferris, uh, 46.3 feet, or, uh, which is about 3.3 feet above flood stage. It's also crested and will continue to fall and fall below flood stage Friday. Uh, blue is at uh, 36.7, 36.77 feet, about 8.8 uh, .8 feet above flood stage, and it's currently crested. And, and Steve, these um, these forecasts and these crests that these take into account what we're forecasting as far as rainfall, right? Um, to they go out of uh, uh, as far as the future. Um, Rainfall it goes out about 12 hours. Okay, so we'll have to we'll have to take into account any any heavier rain. And the way most of these work is uh, the these forecasts are generated um, by the, at the River Forecast Center, and these come out about every six hours or so. And um, so that's that's what we're looking at. And these all are all available. All the data that Steve just showed you is available uh, on our webpage. And I believe there's a way that you can go on there and for the river points of your interest, set up alerts and things like that to come to your phone. There's a video that I can, I'll send a link out to to show you how to set that up. But um, really important to keep up with all that information um, as we go through the next few days. Real quick on severe weather potential. Uh, this is Friday's outlook and a marginal risk of severe down over our far southwest Oklahoma counties and most of our western north Texas counties. Not expecting anything um, too earth shattering at this point, but again, uh, we're going to have a lot of moisture in place, and um, and the potential is there for some strong to severe thunderstorms on Friday. That potential goes up on Saturday. We have a slight risk of severe, basically along and south of I-40, along and west of I-35. Um, a little bit higher potential potentially on on Saturday. Um, if you if you've heard the forecast over the past few Saturdays. It's almost exactly the same thing with regard to uh, the potential for morning clouds and rain and that how that's going to affect the instability. And there's going to be a lot of other ingredients potentially in place, but we're going to have to wait and see what Saturday morning and early afternoon look like uh, because there will be some parameters there for a little bit more significant severe weather, but uh, it's still a little bit too early to nail that down. But again, that slight risk gives you the best estimate of where we think the highest potential is right now. But by far, the, the biggest thing we're going to worry about is flash flooding uh, through the weekend. Uh, everybody's done a good job, I think, focusing on the flooding, but we can use all the help we can get in getting the word out there. We've had two people so far that have drowned after being washed away in their vehicles in flooding, one in Comanche County, one in McLean County. And um, with the busy holiday weekend, with people at lakes, with people traveling, with people uh, enjoying themselves and, and uh, on a long holiday weekend, not paying attention to the weather, driving, whatever. Uh, we're, we're worried about uh, the, the potential for more problems with vehicles. And we're also worried about people playing in the water. So we're trying to emphasize uh, the turnaround, don't drown thing, obviously, but that goes for people playing in the water, people letting their kids play in the water, and also goes for vehicles. So um, keep that in mind. That's going to be a high priority item as we continue to put the uh, information out to, to hopefully get people paying attention. So there was a really good graphic on the, it was a Norman Police Department Facebook page this morning and had a picture of high water and talking about driving around barricades. So there's there's some good information out there. We just need to keep, keep that going. Um, let's see. So we've got a couple of questions in the um, in the chat, and we'll see if Steve or I can answer those. Are the River Stage graphics available online? Yeah, they're available online. You can get all those graphics for each site, and I'll, I'll send the link out to that here in a, in a little bit. Kevin, uh, have, have the floodgates been open or expected to be open at Lake Thunderbird? You know the answer to that, Steve. We don't do a lot of specific lake uh, stuff, but I'm, I'm not aware of that. We'll have to, well, I'll find out for you. I'm not sure. 
What's predicted for the Little River? It's already flooding in Seminole County. Did you have the Little River? Oh, uh, I did not have that on there. Uh, Little River near Tecumseh is um, the crest. It already occurred there, and it was falling. And actually, expected to fall below flood stage um, later today, I believe. Um, so that one's probably already. Um, there crested. was a. There also was a crest near downstream. We had, there's also another gauge, a little river near Sasakwa, and it had crested um, last night uh, just under a flood stage of 26 feet, and it was beginning to fall. All right. Uh, somebody asked about Sunday and Monday severe. I haven't even looked at Sunday or Monday. I, I don't. I think our. I think we'll. It'll be going downhill after that as far as severe potential. Could be some leftover stuff Sunday, but to be honest, we're we're so focused on this short term. I haven't uh, haven't looked, but I don't think there's a very substantial risk on Sunday or or on Monday. Uh, a couple of other flood questions: How close to a hundred year flood stage would you expect for the Comanche County area? I'll have to get back. To you. Yeah, well, Steve, we'll get back to you on that. Is East Cache Creek close to flood stage? Uh, for the um, for Walters, um, flood stage there was 21 feet, and let's see, I believe it's so it's about um, 4.7 feet uh, currently, about 4.7 feet above flood stage, and expected to crest at about 5.4 feet um, above flood stage this evening. Uh, let's see. Okay, well, that's one thing I forgot to mention that we're expecting a couple of different waves of, of rainfall. Um, yeah, the first wave um, late tonight, uh, beginning late tonight and continuing through uh, midday Friday. Um, that's going to be wave one. We expect this to be the late, the lighter of the two. Uh, pretty much widespread. Rainfall amounts possibly three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half with some locally higher amounts. Wave two and the more substantial wave and the one that we think is going to cause the most significant problems comes in um, beginning Saturday afternoon, late Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening, and continuing through uh, much of the day on Sunday. Uh, this is where we may see repeated thunderstorms, slow-moving thunderstorms, and just keeps dumping rain across the area. This is where we'll see the big rainfall totals. So if you uh, look at this graphic right here and subtract about an inch off of what you see there, then uh, that's what you're, you can expect to see from Saturday afternoon through the day on Sunday and perhaps even into Monday. So that could some areas could pick up three to six inches with locally higher amounts uh, just Saturday and Sunday alone. So that's going to be definitely the the um, uh, most um, uh, substantial rainfall period that, that we're looking at. Let's see. Okay. Any questions on the telephone? Hey, Rick. This is James. Hey, James. I wanted to respond to the uh, previous question about the Lake Thunderbird. It looks like right now the core is releasing around 1,100 CMS at Lake Thunderbird right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that, that's good to know. Yeah, James is our uh, one of the hydrologists at the River Forecast Center in Tulsa who's joined us on the call today, too. We're working uh, closely closely with them. Um, oh, to, to answer that question, I believe the, the core in Tulsa set up a special um, flood page for that gives updates as far as what uh, the releases that are coming from the different uh, reservoirs. And that would be um, another website that we could send you the link to so that you okay. can use that. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll send another email out with this after this with the slides, um, with a recording of the webinar, and with a couple of links uh, that, that we talked about here today that, that should help you. Um, Okay, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll plan on doing this again tomorrow. I'll send you the details uh, uh, later today or early tomorrow morning about that. But uh, appreciate everybody joining us. And uh, if there's anything at all we can do for anybody uh, out there, um, 
especially in the areas that are dealing with the major flooding going on, uh, don't hesitate to call us. So thanks a lot.